Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and it's getting a little bit late but I got home tonight and I've had a lot of emails on how to rebuild my snapper. Uh, the last one I received was from John. I got that tonight. John, you didn't tell me where you live, what state. I'm keeping track so let me know. I've reached out and a lot of people in the United States, I have South Africa, uh, Dublin, Ireland, and Canada. So hey, let me know where you live. Now, on how to rebuild a snapper, I'm going to go through some stuff on what I do when I get one in, how I tear it apart, what I tear apart, and what I check to let you know what you need to fix this thing. Uh, the first thing. You want to check, and you want to check these quite often because depending on your yard, if your yard is hilly and uneven and uh, your front axle and back axle move independently because of the tube that connect the two. And these are the plastic bushings that go on the tube. And they go, let me turn this thing, they go right up in here on the top of the frame. This one snaps in the top, in the front. This one snaps in the back. Now they will wear periodically. And you want to make sure you replace them when they start to wear because once you wear through the plastic bushing which is probably a couple bucks then you start wearing into the steel on the frame and if you've subscribed to my channel I've shown you some really bad frames that were wore beyond repair and this rear case I threw out because it I, I couldn't fix it I didn't want to spend that much time and money in repairing it, so I just scrapped it out. Let me move your camera a little closer and see if we can... Uh, I might have to get some more light. I don't know. Okay, now I'm not going to be in much of this because I want you to see what you've got to work on and as I explain it to you. Um... I work on a lot of these, so I got this, I call this my peace pipe. It goes right back in here, and it holds my clutch open so I can turn things without reaching up and trying to work on that clutch pedal. Now the first thing I want to check, I'm going to move this, is I take these apart, I check the bushings. Uh, they wear out a lot quicker than you think. There's a grease fitting right here, and I grease this about once a month. This case has been cut away. Normally you don't see this as good as you're looking at it right now. This is a model that I built. If you're new to my station, this is a model that I built, and it actually runs. I have electric motor hooked to it. And I can show you how everything in here works by running this. Now, when you buy parts, I had uh, John was the last guy to email me. And he said he got a hold of a snapper cheap. The guy just put a 12-horse engine on it. He said, I got it running. Now I want to rebuild my drivetrain. Where can I buy a kit? Well, that would be awesome if they sell a kit. But they don't, uh, because depending on your terrain that you're driving this thing on, uh, the conditions of your yard, if it's real sandy like mine, different parts wear on different machines. You have to order the parts separately. Best thing to do is get yourself a piece of paper and just start writing them down. I get my parts from Parts Tree. Uh, I made up a book of uh, 
their website is awesome. You, you go on partstree.com, you can go in there and you hit snapper and you go through the menus, you put in your model and model number and this engine size, the original engine. And it'll pull up prints for everything in here. And it's all broke down separately. Your chain case is separate. Your differential is separate. Your clutch, uh, your drive disc, your uh, bushings, the caps for the bushings. It's all broke down on separate pages. What I do is I, I go on their website. I go in these separate areas. Your rear case is another one. I take screenshots of this. I print them and I made myself a book. So you want to go in, you want to check your bearings. Now it's hard to tell and I've had a lot of guys say, oh my bearings are good. Until they actually get to the point where they take the tire off, they take this wheel flange off, they take this cap off and they actually wiggle this did a slop in that. That that bushing shot. Now, if you're gonna replace your bushings, this side has a rubber boot on it with a lip seal. Here's an old lip seal. And in one of my videos, I show you how to get this old lip seal out and the new one in without ripping this. It is very stiff and hard. You have to soften that to get this out of here. Now, when you buy one of these, you're going to want to buy two. The lip seals do not come with the boot. You have to order that separately. This side has a plastic cap on it. What these plastic caps did was it keeps the sand out of the bushing. Once sand gets up in here and gets stuck in the soft brass, it will grind your axle beyond repair. So by the time you figure out, hey, my bushing's bad, your axle's shot too. So keep your eye on that. These little plastic caps have been discontinued. They offer nothing for this side of your axle. So all the sand and dirt is going to get right up in there and destroy your axle and your bushing. So order two of these and one seal for this side and in one of my videos I think it's six of seven or five of seven I tell you what size of lip seal to buy and put in this boot for this side to seal that up to keep the dirt out of it. Next thing I'll do is I pull the chain case out and take it apart. The crud you're going to find inside of this thing is unbelievable is the only way to describe it. The double aught snapper lube is so thick and within a short period of time it sets up worse than old grease. And as this stuff is spinning in there it is no longer picking up that lube. It's hard. It's not doing anything. That's why I don't use it. Now some of these uh, chain case covers and I've seen a couple differential covers. One guy told me, well, I think it's a, a vent hole. I'm not really sure if it's a vent hole <clears throat> or if they just had a problem with their dies. And when they're stamping these, it was ripping the corner, the sharp corner up here. And there's a sharp corner down here, it's gone on this one, that it was piercing a little hole in there. If you hold these covers up to a light and look, and if you see a little pinhole in this steel cover, have somebody weld it for you. These are not sealed tight enough that you need a vent hole in them. Now the chains. This chain, let me throw a light on here. This chain is way too loose. If I was running this machine, that would probably jump off the sprocket on me. Now I'll show you a way to check your chain. Let me spin you around on this 
bench over here. We're going to be jumping around a lot, so uh, I hope I can not go too fast. This is a chain out of a gear case. I just got a couple hunks of steel. You can use a couple pieces of wood. Anything to keep the chain from snaking around on you when you're checking for slop. I throw it in between these two pieces. Now you can hear this. That's the slop in all these rollers on that chain. This chain's wore out. It looks good, but it needs to be replaced. Now I'll take this apart. I'll check the chain. There is bearings inside of this one. You have two at the top, which are little needle bearings. You have two at the bottom that are actually ball bearings. Them seem to hold up a lot better than the needle bearings do. You know, machines that I've rebuilt, I very seldom ever replace these sets of bearings. They seem to hold up pretty good. You want to check the slop on this hex shaft and this tube that slides on it. One of mine were really bad. So I got rid of it and I replaced the shaft and the, this top sprocket that has this mating part on it. Uh, that's about all in there. Now on the differential, let me see if I can slide you over here. The same thing goes. You have a chain in here that you want to check. You want to split this thing apart and get all that dried up crap out of there. You have a sprocket down here that runs on this chain. Let me get you lower. Now there's a lower sprocket down here this hex tube has a gear on the end of it or a sprocket on the end of it that turns this sprocket down here which is this part it has a, a big sprocket on this side and a gear on this side that meshes into this gear these wear out a lot more than this part does you want to look at your gears And most all gears will have a nice flat spot on the top. If they go to a sharp edge, which they call a knife edge, they're shot. You has to, they have to be replaced. This one's in pretty good shape. I can show you some pictures of one that it's not in such good shape. Here's a couple of gears that I took off of here. This one you can see has still got some flat area to them, but if you take your fingernail, you can feel that it's rolled a burr up on here. This one is almost to what they would call a knife's edge. This, this gear is shot and that's why I had to replace it. get these out of here this one is not too bad but like I said before this is just a, my model and I'm not going to be driving it so I'm not too worried about it but you want to check inside your differential there's two gears in here that all these little gears hook into this gear here is for this half of the axle. This gear on this side is for this axle on this side. You can see how the differential works when this isn't turning. When this turns, these little gears are stationary. Both axles turn at the same time. These you're going to want to check. These, I 
I've never had these gears actually wear out as much as the shafts that they're spinning on seem to get undersized a little. This one's got some slop in it, but I've never had one of them break. I got some pictures here that one of my viewers had sent me and said, you know, my, my snapper runs, I bought it, it's running, but it makes a, a big crunching noise every once in a while. Well, this is what you're going to want to look for when you tear your snapper down. Someone tore this machine apart, took the differential apart, and when they put it back together, this gear here is supposed to be on this bolt. They didn't even put it together right. So I told him what to do and he took this apart. It's part of your differential. He put the gears on where they belonged and in the right orientation. It's running great. This is your short axle, this gear right here. And you can see there's a tooth missing. And then when it bound up enough, this is this gear. It has no teeth at all left on it. And when this started breaking down, it destroyed this gear, which is this big one that this meshes into. That's about a hundred dollar accident there. When I bought my 33 inch machine, I bought it knowing there was problems with it. When I tore it down to fix it, this was a short axle on this side. There's no teeth at all on it. They're all gone. That's what was making the crunchy noise and why it wouldn't go across the yard for him anymore. But it was a simple fix and it didn't cost that much. Now when your bushings start getting bad and you change your bushings, a lot of times you're going to have to change your axle too. Because, like I said, what happens is once dirt gets in this joint, the dirt will embed itself in the soft material. And then what it does is it just grinds or laps the harder material until that's shot. And if you look close, you can see where it destroyed the axle. This is a short axle. This is what they call the long axle. Once it does this, if you're going to put a new bushing in it, buy the axle because the axle's not going to run good in that new bushing and it'll just it'll just destroy it. And the same was on this side. This side wasn't bad, but still you can see the wear where the bushing was rubbing. That's why I don't like the double aught snapper lube. It is so thick, it doesn't get distributed in there like it should. Now this is your gear and sprocket that goes down here on the bottom, or I should say the back side of your differential. Now how this gets lubricated is in you have a little hole right there. And as all these parts are turning, it's throwing that lube around and it just kind of works its way down in here. These little gears in here are the same way. They rely on that lubricant being splashed around in there to keep them lubricated. Well that snapper lube is too thick. It doesn't do that. Your boots. You want to check your boots. Let me turn this back around. I even cut the boots in half and stuck them back on. If you have a hole in your boot, you're going to get dirt in here. And as you can tell, the inside of this, if I put the light on, I'll put the light on the inside of the differential. 
and you can see it coming out around here. If you get a rip in your boot, dirt is going to get in here and inside your differential and you're going to be lapping everything and ruining it. These are very important to check on. Check them once a year when you do the rest of your greasing and maintenance. If you get dirt and uh, sand in here, it's going to stop this thing from shifting easy. That's your first indication that you have problems with your boots. If this thing is starting to shift hard, then you're getting dirt in there and it's binding it up. This thing should shift very smoothly. Now this is what you're going to see when you go on PartsTree.com. You're going to see a page like this with all kinds of machines on it, different brands. You want to touch Snapper. Then it's going to pull up, I got these in order, it's going to pull up this menu and you want to touch the one that says Snapper Mowers Rear Engine Rider. You touch that and this, these pages will pull up, one through seven. And mine is, I believe, on page five. And what you want to look for is you, you look for your model number and your engine size. And a, you'll have a series. A lot of these machines all take about the same parts. So if you can't find the exact one, just zero in on your model number and the size of your snapper, your blade. You can call these guys, and they, they are excellent. They'll help you through everything as far as finding your parts. And then you come up to a page where it'll, it'll ask you what you want to look for. And it really breaks it down. Uh, decals, differential right-hand fender, drive disc assembly, uh, just anything you need on this machine. Let me go to a couple pages I have. I finally got these in order. Tip this down a little. I don't know if you can see it sideways or not. Now this happens to be the chain case. It shows you a complete breakdown and it kind of shows you how the whole thing goes back together. And then uh, it gives you part numbers and you flip to the, uh, the other side of the screen and it gives you a breakdown of all the parts and the costs. It's a really nice website. They have just about anything you need to repair this snapper. And I just did screenshots and I printed these. So that's what I do. Once I get to say tore apart, you can either take pictures or just make some notes on what parts you need. Go to parts tree, look up them pages, and that's all I did. I just picked out the parts I needed. I called them. And I actually talk to someone. I don't like dealing on a computer. I'm old-fashioned, I guess. I like to talk to a person. Now, a lot of these gears in here, they don't have names for them. Uh, as you'll see when you look them up in that uh, the breakdowns, for instance, this one, they call this a 63-tooth gear. That's all they call it. All the gears are named that way. The sprockets are about the same way. They go by how many teeth are on them. These chains, this one's not too bad. The chain case chain is shot. It's way stretched out. If you're not familiar with roller chains, I suggest buying them from 
parts tree. If you know how a roller chain works and how tight it's supposed to be, you can go to your local Ace Hardware. They sell this chain by the foot. You can buy a master link and you can buy a half link because I don't know which one you're going to need. And uh, a roller chain is not supposed to be tight. If it's too tight, you wear the chain out and you wear out your sprockets. A roller chain only grips on a few teeth on the top side of the sprocket. The rest of it is loose. It keeps it from wearing out. There again, that's why I like 8090 gear loop. You get that stuff in here with these parts moving, that stuff's going to get flinged everywhere. The double aught snapper lube, it's to me, it's just too thick. You have chains and sprockets and gears in your four-wheel drives. Your transfer case has a big roller chain in it. That has 8090 gear lube in it. The rear end and front end on a four-wheel drive has 8090 gear lube in it. Uh, your your standard transmissions in your cars, not many of them have them anymore, but like I said, I'm old school, I like a stick. If they can hold up in a car of all the abuse that gets, what do you think it's going to do in one of these lawnmowers? And that stuff will last forever. And when you do want to change it, you can pull your full fill plugs out and just lay the thing back down on its tires and let it run out. And then fill it back up for fresh stuff. Your double lot snapper lube, you're going to have to tear it apart to get that crap out. It, it's that thick. And I, I don't have any pictures. I wish I would have kept them. Uh, I had a couple viewers that tore theirs down and showed me the inside of their chain case. And I mean, you can't shake this stuff out. It's so thick. And uh, I just told them to clean it out with some paint thinner and a bucket. I have a small two gallon parts machine or parts cleaner that my in-laws got me for a Christmas present and that thing is it's just perfect for what I do it's only got two and a half gallons in it it's got a pump and a brush uh, I think they got it at Harbor Freight and it works but uh, that's about it if you have any questions on uh, how to find parts or how to tear this apart send me an email if you have a particular item you're you're wondering about take some pictures of it and send the pictures if you're going to send me pictures you're going to have to go through my email i had one viewer i think it was john this last one i got he uh, put a question in the description below a video and he says i sent you pictures i don't think the picture didn't come through i don't know if you can uh, if you can send pictures in that particular part of the uh, YouTube, it, I don't know if it, it maybe sent them wrong. I, I don't know, but they didn't come through. They always come through on my email. So if you got a particular question and you want pictures with it, send them to my email. I wish all these emails that I've got <clears throat> would have went on the description below all the videos because I have got some fantastic feedback from you guys. It just, I never dreamed that I'd get this much great response to, uh, to the videos that I've been doing. I have a few negative ones, but hey, there's always, there's always a few negative people that just don't like whatever you do. <clears throat> uh, when I upload uh, videos and uh, especially when you have to type in the description I don't type I just push the little microphone and I talk the last problem I got from a viewer was I spelled something wrong well I'm sorry I didn't spell it the little tablet did and it spelled it wrong and he made sure he let me know that I should go in there and fix that so as soon as my tablet straightens out uh, it had an uh, update and it messed it up and I can't get into any of the old videos to change anything so I guess he's just gonna have to wait until they re-update this thing and fix it for me 
But if you're not subscribed and you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe word. I keep saying subscribe button. There is no button. You just touch the word subscribe. It's free. If you don't have an email address on YouTube, it's going to ask you for it. The only reason it asks you for your email address is so it can let you know when I put another video on. There is no cost to you at all. Uh, after you hit the subscribe word, it's going to pop up a little symbol that looks like a bell. If you touch that bell, it will notify you by a little ding or something that I've uploaded a new video every time. If you don't want to be bothered by that, then don't touch that bell and it won't notify you. You're just going to have to find them on your own. The thumbs up and thumbs down. Thumbs up are important. It helps other people find my videos. It goes by how many views I have, how many subscribers I have, and how many thumbs up I have. And then when, well, like this John, he types in, I'm having trouble with my snapper, how do I fix it? The computer picks out a bunch of videos and sends it to them, but it picks out the top videos. The ones that are getting the most views and the most subscriptions, that's the ones they're going to send to you. And believe me, I've been searching the internet when I started this, and there is a lot of videos out there that are just a total waste of time. Don't even bother with them. But if you have any particular questions like, yeah, I don't know anything, just send me an email and I will get back to you. I am way over 400 emails. And I've answered every one of them. So uh, I guess I guess this is it. I've been this is a half hour already. So let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot them over here. I'd be more than happy to help you. And until next time, work safe, have fun, and we'll talk to you soon.